Paco says, if you want to create a design system in Compose where we use a slot API that doesn't allow any composable, but only allows specific ones, how would you do that? So here I've got some example code where I've got a toolbar composable. Yes, yeah, so just come down here. So we've got a toolbar composable and you can see we've got a button one and button two and we're just accepting this type here, which is basically just wide open, right? Any kind of a composable that you wanna to pass to it, you can pass to it and that's what we're doing up here. Uh, so we're passing a button. And then down here, I just did a little document uh, stuff so that we can have a toolbar and some kind of document. Um, yep, yeah, so up here, this purple is the toolbar and then we've got these two buttons, hello and goodbye, and I can tap those and we just get output in the console. So right now, our button one and button two are wide open. They just take any composable completely unrestricted. And we do have the parameter names here that kind of communicate the intent that we expect it to be a button, uh, but it really can be any composable at all. It doesn't have to be a button. So if, if we came up here, we could even just change this one to text and everything's gonna work. The question is if we want to limit this toolbar composable function here so that it only accepts certain kinds of composables, what we can do is we can create a class that extends the composable function type. So let's come down here and we'll just do a new class. We'll call it toolbar button. We're gonna pass in the text for the button. We're gonna use that as the label and also for what we output in the console. And then here I'm gonna do at compo uh, composable. And so this is extending the same type that we have up here. So this class is extending that type. And then of course we do that. We also have to implement its members, which is gonna be invoke. So we'll implement that. I'm gonna come on here and also put composable here. And then inside here is where I'm gonna put the button. So let me see if I can just maybe grab from up here paste that in here. And then instead of this, we'll just pass in whatever the text was. All right, and so now we can update our toolbar composable up here so that instead of accepting this type, we accept a toolbar button. And then of course, that means up here, we gotta pass something in that's more specific. So we can come in here and just say, uh, toolbar button. Hello. And so now that all works, uh, let's give this a run and make sure that we didn't break anything. All right, so it compiled and it runs. We can hit hello and goodbye and that works exactly like we were hoping it would. So now we've got the type safety around the composable there. We know that we're accepting only certain types of composables. And if we want to further limit the options, as Paco asked about ensuring that the left button was only a back button or a close button, we can extend these types even further uh, if we want. So just to kind of take it all the way on this one here, we can change this guy. I'm gonna change this guy to open. I'll explain that in just a minute. Uh, and then we can create another class for either back or close. I'm just gonna call this finish button. And then we can create some subtypes from this as well. I'm just gonna create an object for back button, back and close, just like that. And then we just uh, come up here and we say, if the very first one has to be either a close or a back button, we'll just change this to a finish button. And then of course up here, just change this to one of those objects that we had. So with this, you can see that works. We're not gonna be able to pass the goodbye button, for example, uh, this goodbye button into that first one. It's gotta be one of the finish, finish buttons. Now I'm not an expert on how Compose works on the inside. So if anybody in chat knows of any reason why this approach would be risky, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. I have not field tested this approach in any production apps. Uh, the only issue I've run into it though, is that the type that we accept in our toolbar composable here, it has to have a concrete implementation of invoke. So let me show you what I mean by that. 
So here, um, I changed it up a little bit. I've just got this abstract class toolbar button, and I just did a, a hello and goodbye. And we've got the invoke is implemented in the subclasses, but not in this toolbar button. With this one, as it is right here, we're accepting hello and goodbye down here. We can run this and this is gonna work fine. Yep, just fine there. But I can break this by just changing the parameter type here from hello button to toolbar button. So we'll say toolbar button. And you can see we don't get any compiler errors here. I'll run this again and we get this exception at runtime. Let me pull this up so we can see it here. And the error is a no such method error. So it's looking on that toolbar button class for invoke with these, uh, the composer and an integer parameter types. I'm guessing that the, uh, the compose compiler is um, trying to generate the overload. And so we can actually fix this by, for example, if I just grab this and paste that in here, but just by adding the, uh, the invoke function here, it will actually work now. So it's a little bit of an oddity with, with this approach. And it was the only one, the only oddity I was able to find. But if you guys, like I said, if you guys know of any reason why that uh, might be risky, I'd, I would like to know because um, I do think type safety would be pretty helpful for the uh, composables, but I, I don't I want to make sure that it's not going to mess up anything else with the uh, compose compiler uh, with what it's expecting there. Thank you.